I'm gonna take a shot on this one. You gotta say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Hello everybody, welcome to the Big Apple Hockey Bar Talk segment where we gauge our confidence on NHL topics based off our choice of drink. And uh, this one was from me from watching uh, TV Sunday night where the NHL channel released their 50 greatest players right now. And at number 39, Mika Zibanejad. Uh, should Mika Zibanejad be higher? We'll start with Filk. I'm going to say beer because I, I don't know if he's a top – I would say maybe a top 20, 25 forward somewhere in that range. Um, then you got to factor in defensemen and goalies as well. I, I I would have him a little higher than this, but not a ton. I don't know if I would have him. If we're talking all overall players. I don't know if I would have him higher than I would say maybe 30. So I'm going to go with beer. Okay. Anthony. Um, I, I, I think, I think beer, um, you know, I, I don't put much stock in, I don't put much stock into the, um, into the, the rankings. I mean, Flurry, like Mark andre Flurry was a couple spots ahead of him. Um, so it's, they, it's players from all different positions and you can't really, you can't really compare position like goalie and forward like that. So to me, those rankings don't really mean anything. And like John said, he's a good player, but I mean, he's not like the elite amongst the whole league. So I mean, yeah, could he have been like, you know, 33rd or sure? But you're talking like ins inconsequential when you're talking about a few spots. So, um, yeah, uh, beer for me. But overall, I think these lists are kind of eh. We're going to make it a clean sweep. Um, I softened my stance on Sunday when I saw this. First, I went, you got to be kidding me. And then kind of thought about it and went, uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, Matt Barzell's 42. Uh, so you figure he'd be a little bit higher too. I mean, Jake Gensel uh, was in like 41, I think. Some of these uh, like I, that. I, I think I, those two are around, around, right? I would say. You're right. That's why it's like, again, that's why I said I softened my stance on that because, uh, uh you, you know, I trust, trust in those guys. They're the ones that voted on it, but I would have, I would have had Mika initially in the twenties. And then I started thinking it to myself, maybe he's in the thirties. So uh, that's it on him. Here's one, starting with you, Anthony. The Islanders have regressed this season. So season. I mean, I'll, I'll start. So obviously, they've 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 brought in Zach Parise. You know, I, at least Islanders still haven't announced it, but they've brought in Parise. So that get that gets Leo Komarov out of out of the lineup, out of the lineup, and he's he's a better hockey player than Leo. So that that's an upgrade. Yeah, they lost Jordan Eberle, but. They brought back Kyle Palmieri, who will just take his spot on the top line. Um, and then you have Anders Lee back. And then Oliver Wallstrom will then just play on the third line where Palmieri would have played. And the guy had 12 goals in 44 games. You know, he, he looks like he's ready to break out. Um, yeah, and then they lost Nicoletti. They haven't they haven't done anything to replace him yet. You know, obviously there's there's still time until, you know, training camp this season starts. So who knows what's going to happen there. So you could look at that and say, oh, well, you know, Nicoletti's gone and right now they're going to, you know, as of this exact moment, they're going to replace him with like Hickey or a rookie like Samuel Bolduc or or um, Robin Salo. So you could say that, you know, that's a downgrade, which you, you'd be right in saying. But the thing is, the Islanders, regardless of Letty, they have trots. They're going to play within the same structure. That's not going to change. They still have the, their strength is still their team defense and goaltending. Um, so overall, um, honestly, no, I, I, I still think all to get sued, they're, they're the same team. I don't think they're going to be much different at all. Obviously, if they go ahead and, and get a guy like Tarasenko, which, you know, before he went on, there was a couple of things that were being talked about, then yeah, that changes things, um, for the better. But right now, regardless of everything they did, I, I think they're the same Islander team and is going to play the same way. So, um, you know, no shot on this. I, I, I think they're the same New York Islander team. I really need to make that shot guy bigger. <laughs> Phil. Uh, beer. And I, I would, I, I would say this because it's, it's slight. It's not 
they're probably the, the division leader, the division winner at the end of the day, I would say. But I don't know what Zach Parise has to give you anymore, even though – is he an upgrade over Leo Komarov? Yeah, probably, but how much of an upgrade? How much does Zach Parise have to give you? And can he stay healthy? And then there's Nick Letty. And, and you could say whatever you want about Trotz's system – and everything, yeah, that's great, but you still need players to run that system. You can't just let go of someone like Nick Letty, who's a top four defenseman, even though he's not the the number two defenseman or the top pairing guy he was like four years ago or so. You can't let go of a guy like Nick Letty and not replace him. You just you can't. And it, it's they've either got to go get somebody or somebody's really got to step up and, and take over. So on paper, yeah. I would say they've regressed slightly. And you could say, oh, well, Kyle Palmieri takes over Jordan Everly's spot. Kyle Palmieri's not the playmaker Jordan Everly was. And Jordan Everly was a real good fit with Matt Barzell. Is Kyle Palmieri going to be a real good fit with Matt Barzell? Sure, he's a shooter. And, and yeah, they do need snipers. And Anders Lee is back. But you need someone who can also help drive the play. So you, you, you're losing one of your better play drivers, probably your number two forward, if you ask me. Uh, you're losing a top four defenseman. And, again, Parise, I don't know what he's going to give you. I don't. I, I, to act like he's a sure thing and he's like a clear, clear cut upgrade over Komarov, I don't know at this point because I don't, I don't know if he's going to stay healthy. Do I think he's skill-wise an upgrade? Yeah. But, again, can he stay healthy? And he's old now. So, I mean, he's going to be, what, 30, 37? So, I, I don't know. I don't know what he has left to give. So, I, I, I'm going to say beer here. It's not big, but there's definitely a little bit of a. I'm going to say beer. I'm a little bit closer to shot. And the reason why I'm even saying it like that is because I love their forward group. I think their forward group is great, but Phil, you just convinced me on one thing. They they could actually um, not fill the the role that uh, Jordan Eberle was because Jordan uh, Jordan uh, Palmieri isn't the playmaker. Maybe, but maybe Parise slides in one of he could be on any one of those lines and at least be productive. I'm not saying a full season. I'm not saying 50 points. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, and though he had he had 20 goals, I think it was two years ago. 25 so, a year ago. A year ago. So it's 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 not out of the realm of possibilities, but you're putting all this on a 38 year old uh, guys from the 2003 draft, who um <laughs> was still <laughs> yeah, but he was also one of the he older. Still got ones nothing out of his Ranger fans. So, <laughs> which by the way, check out our what if on the Rangers drafted uh, Ryan Getzlaff instead of Hugh Jessman. Uh, inspired uh, by the Marvel What If series. So, um, yeah, I'm just saying to beer with it. I think the Islanders might have regre regressed a little bit, but they're going to, there's still two more weeks, and we'll see who they got on PTOs to um, uh, fill that fifth spot or the sixth spot that, you know what I mean, the right date. Okay, guys, here's the one you guys have been waiting for a little bit. Don Liddell is lying when he says the KK offer sheet was not about revenge. Going with you, Anthony, you first. <laughs> um, you know, shot again. I, I know that he's tried to trade for Cockenham before the offer sheet, but and I know he doesn't necessarily control the social media team, that there's a separate department, but everything they did there, just like the trolling and the it's just the, the so you mean round, not shot. Sorry, yes, round. Sorry, um, it, it's it, it, come on. It's blatantly obvious with everything they've done. Um, it was definitely a revenge. Uh, yeah, they like I said, they like the player, but you know the, the this was revenge cold served on a cold dish. There, um, <laughs> I don't have to go over everything that, like I said, the social media team did. There was a slew of them. Um, of things they did and it was funny and I think the sport needs more of it but it's it's around here okay Phil I'll just put it right up for you <laughs> there you go I mean what what else is there really to say it, it just it, it, again like Anthony said the social media team is not controlled by Waddell but like uh, everything that they did 
and the fact that it was Jesperi Kotkaniemi and the fact that it's an offer sheet and the fact that they went and overpaid him drastically for one year on the offer sheet really goes to show you that although they may have had interest in Kotkaniemi, apparently they didn't have enough interest to the point where they couldn't even offer him a long-term offer sheet. Like one year? Obviously, you're not sure about the player if you're only doing it for one year. So, um, yeah, that that one's kind of got me too. Um, I, I am gonna go beer though. Uh, I be, I believe it a hundred percent. The social media team he doesn't control. Y- if you're doing it for revenge, I mean, part of it is like that Simpsons thing where it's why do you want to be a big brother? If you're going six point, if you're go- going to blow up your salary cap, risk a first and a third on a player that, I mean, who knows? He might work out. He might not. But if it's just solely out of spite, that's not going to work. It's that's not going to be in there. It's it's sort of like trying to return an item for spite, like they did on Seinfeld. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.